Every gardener's dream is to be able to grow whatever they want, anything to their heart's content. And certainly that's the case for me, even though I'm living in San Diego zone 10 B, there's still some things I struggle to grow until now. With the help of the incredible builders over at BC Greenhouses, I actually have the greenhouse of my dreams standing right next to me and I can't wait to show you what's inside. But before I do, there's a lot of considerations that go into where to put a greenhouse, how to design a greenhouse. So let's get into that right now. When thinking about the greenhouse, I certainly had a lot of opinions and a lot of desires. I knew I wanted it to be made out of glass because I liked the look. I knew I wanted something a little bit more modern, maybe not a traditional English greenhouse. I also knew I wanted a relatively simple foundation, nothing too crazy, no stonework, no concrete pouring, anything like that. But that's about all I knew. So I had to talk to Danny over at BC Greenhouses to figure out if all my crazy weird dreams could actually be translated into reality. So the first thing I talked about with Danny is just sharing my thoughts. Yeah, let's let's start with overall size. I mean, I know from my area, and this is probably important for anyone considering, you kind of have to consider your permitted and, or unpermitted structure sort of sizes. And I know for me, eight foot by 10 foot, I don't need any permit for, which is basically what we size this. Yeah, we call this a freestanding lean-to, uh, okay. a shed roof, a single, a single sloped shed roof. And then having him tell me how realistic those thoughts actually were in translating those into a CAD drawing so I could see the render of what the greenhouse would look like in all the different angles, playing around with different placements of vents and heights and dimensions and materials so that it actually starts coming to life. After I finally locked the design with Danny, it went off into production and Rick and Cody, who are the owners of BC Greenhouse, they actually were gonna fly down and install the greenhouse. However, I needed a foundation set. An Epic Gardening fan actually hit us up and said, hey, let me come on over and help out. I have 17 years of professional grading experience and I'm not one to be too proud to ask for help in a situation like this. So our friend David came down to give us some help on the foundation. My friend David, and our team have been putting in the structure to get this greenhouse ready to receive. So what did we do here, David? Well, we had this falling at a plane and we had to level it out and balance it and uh, get some compaction going and get the base ready for the gravel coming in, which yeah. will be the bottom of the greenhouse. Yeah, and we're gonna use these concrete pylons, place them at the corners, throw some pressure treated, four by fours down and then some felt to protect it and then put gravel on top so we have a nice base that's level for the greenhouse to sit on. It was really cool to see David do his work and I'm super thankful to him for helping out. When the greenhouse came in, I was totally stoked. I could not wait to open it up, but I didn't want to because I was quite honestly afraid of damaging something in these amazing wooden boxes. So the build went something like this. Rick and Cody showed up and started deconstructing the boxes and building the frame wall by wall tall side, small side, and then the angled sides, standing that up and then working with the glazing, which are the big glass panels, quite thick, six millimeters, about a quarter of an inch thick, really, really tough, and really what gives the greenhouse all of its strength. Once those panels are in, you can't move it around much, which is exactly what you want. After that, it was final details, putting on the exhaust fan, the ventilation, the louvers, as well as the door. Although you can build these greenhouses yourself and many people who purchase do, I'll say this, it probably wouldn't have been a good idea to let me do it because after watching Rick and Cody get after it in about a day or so, I think you wouldn't be seeing this video for another month or two if it was up to me. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the Epic Greenhouse. Much to come in this space. I cannot tell you how excited I am. It's getting a little windy, getting a little cold. Come on inside. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about this amazing space. First of all, the second you come in, you already notice that it is quite a bit warmer in here. We've already had it for, I don't know, four or five days now. And what I've noticed is, let's say it's about 70 degrees outside it will actually get up to about a plus 15 degree differential in Fahrenheit. We got Celsius up here for you, but I know that because I have a little min max thermometer right here. So I've just been playing around and seeing what is the actual differential, what can I grow in here, and what do I need to do as far as ventilation. And speaking of, let's go first to the manual ventilation options. On this greenhouse, what I decided to do is have some top vents 
that are manually controlled via a roto crank, which is just a fancy way to say, spin this thing and it's gonna close the window. So this one's a little bit squeaky right now, but basically you can just do that, twirl it to your heart's content. So every morning I come out and I just twirl these open just like that. And the coolest part, to me at least, I'll talk about this fan in a second, are actually these vents down here. So these vents are screened because they're on the ground, so no predators can come in when they're open, but these actually open automatically with this sort of louvered vent structure. There's some sort of wax inside that when it's a certain temperature, it actually expands and it pumps the hydraulic and actually forces the vent open. So based on raw, conditions, just the environmental conditions, that's what's gonna open this vent up. So you can see it's open right now. I think somewhere around the 70 to 75 Fahrenheit, again, Celsius on the screen, it will open up. So you can play around with that. What's really nice is now I have automatic vents right here, not even electrically automatic, just sort of hydraulically automatic, very kind of cool principle of physics here. You can see it's a little bit empty in here right now, mostly because I don't quite know exactly the best way to orient this space. The first thing I wanna do though is get an electrician in because the main ventilation is actually not hooked up yet. I have this exhaust fan up top. You can see the wires hanging right here. And then there is a vent down here that is going to be triggered at the same time. There's actually a thermostat right in here that once I wire this up, when this thermostat registers the temperature that I want it to, let's say 75, this is maybe 85 degrees Fahrenheit, it will trigger and then it will open that vent and it will pump this exhaust fan going at the same time. So fresh air is coming in the bottom, the hottest air, which of course would be at the top, is going to be sending it out that way. It's a pretty strong fan. So I'm really curious to see how that works in the summer because as we know here in San Diego, it can get pretty warm. In fact, it's kind of warm in here right now and we're sitting in late February, early March right now. So what's actually growing in the greenhouse? Well, just about everything I can get my hands on, including probably the weirdest thing, my very own sourdough starter. Over on the Epic Homesteading channel, I've been baking a lot. And this is, believe it or not, my very own sourdough starter. So I've never really done this much before, but this is the perfect place to actually grow the starter. It needs a warmer environment for the yeast to help rise this starter to the point where I can make my own bread. I found actually even rising bread in the greenhouse, believe it or not, kind of a funny thing, but if it works for plants, it's the environment they want, it turns out to be the environment the sourdough wants as well. So that's kind of the weirdest thing I've got in here, but a lot of the more obvious things are just all of the seedlings that we're growing here at the homestead right now. So this is everything we have in line for spring, as well as a little bit of a taste of summer to come, but things like peas doing really well, things like cherry bell radishes. I've got all sorts of different root crops and Asian greens here. My girlfriend's actually doing a bunch of flowers right here, and we're just kind of messing around with a lot of different things. I even have some ginger propagations. It's really a place where kind of whatever I want to grow, I can grow, and I've moved in some plants that really wouldn't do well outside, even in San Diego. This is a coffee plant. Yes, the plant that grows the bean that has the seed. That is the thing that all of us around the world drink. Coffee, right there, amazing. Over here, right behind us, is this blue Java banana, which I've struggled to grow bananas in general in San Diego. I'm hoping maybe in the greenhouse I can get it off to a better start. And then over here, what's really nice about the greenhouse space is there are these rails and I can take something like this, which is just a daisy chained hanging pot, and I can suspend 50 pounds per hanger here on these rails. And all I have to do to get them in and out is just kind of slide it. So there's just a little nut here and you can pop it up in, slide it over like that and voila. As long as it's nice and secure, you can hang 50 pounds on. So if I really want to, these rails are a function of every single vertical here. So I can hang them from anywhere here in the space that I want to and even as you can see, a pretty big hanging metal pot. This is actually from Chris at Fluent Garden. She gave it to me as like a little greenhouse celebration. This guy is pretty heavy and it's hanging right above these ceilings. It's doing totally fine. So in here, I think what I'll end up doing is adding a lot more shelving, a lot more hanging pots. I wanna cram as much as humanly possible in this space, have it be inviting and lush and productive because look, I've got eight by 10 square feet of perfectly conditioned space. I might as well make the most of it. 
That is the Epic Greenhouse, my friends. Much more to come. Thanks to BC Greenhouses and Rick and Cody for coming down for the install. Stay tuned because there is a ton of cool stuff, cool plants. I'm gonna try to grow vanilla beans in here. So subscribe, check out our greenhouse playlist, check out our greenhouse supplies. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.